What's up folks at home? It's turning into fall. It's almost September. The bite's gonna change. Fishing's gonna get tough. We're gonna talk you through it here. We're gonna go underwater. We're gonna talk about fall baits, where we fish them, how we do it. We're gonna get after them. We'll see you out there. All right, guys, when we're talking about fall fishing, we're talking about moving baits and finding transition areas. So what we have in front of us is a classic transition area, right? What I mean by transition area is in the summertime, fish are running out here in this main body of the main lake, eating bait fish, chasing, finding depth. In the fall, they're gonna begin to funnel bait fish into this area, right? And I know, because I've winter fished this lake a lot and I've fished it on the ice, that fish spend a lot of time in this backwater back here. So in the fall, they're coming from out here in the main body, following these break lines in a transition area back through. Now, they're going to stop at every piece of cover on this that they can find, right? By cover on this, we mean there's a dock right there with a whole bunch of weeds out in front of it. That is a great spot to stop in the fall on transition area. Then you move on, there's lily pads back in this pocket, right? That's another fantastic option to fish. In the fall, it's all about junk fishing, right? We did all of those underwater baits. We did all of that stuff. And what it comes down to is you've got to pick the right bait for the right situation. You got to pick those transition areas and try to find an area where fish are going to end up biting. Now, as we're talking about transition areas and junk fishing, this one's a lot of intuition, if you will. Fall fishing is a lot of intuition. A lot of guys struggle in the fall because there's not a hard and fast pattern. It's a lot of junk fishing. It's a lot of fishing your way through different situations, but transition areas will help you. This is like a choke point where fish are gonna feed and try to find what they can. Now I'm gonna throw a map up on the screen here to talk about the breaks, but the breaks come into a V. Anywhere where things make a V, right? There's the V right here. Any place where things make a V, any kind of indentation is a place where they're gonna trap bait fish. Now we've seen bait fish flicking through here. So I'm throwing this, right? With that purple pin on it to mark up that electric shed, a great option because one, it's gonna stand out from schools of bait with that. And two, that's what bass wanna see and wanna eat this time of year, right? We got bait fish flicking over there. We might catch one down through this whole channel right here by these lily pads. We might pick up a frog and flip them. We might you know, punch those things. We might flip that pit boss in there. We're just looking for different ways to hit these fish in transition areas. All right, guys. So when I'm throwing moving baits in the fall, I'm picking up the weedless swim bait on an underspin nine out of 10 times. This bait has an awesome head wobble here. We got the Kytec on an owner flashy swimmer and this bait right here will flat out catch them. I pick up this bait when the leaves start to turn and I don't put it down until the water turns into the 30s. This bait right here has a great wobble. The Kytec with the extra dye on the tail in that electric shad color really, really does good in off-colored water around weeds and stick-ups. You can also skip this bait up under docks. You can fish it through pads. You can do a lot with it. It comes through just about everything great and it's a bait that will generate a ton of bites for you. You just have to fish it everywhere. Now, the next bait I'm gonna pick up is a chatterbait. And this time of year, I love chatterbaits with bluegill trailers. Here's a Biospawn Exocraw on it, another great option. And I like to pop this chatterbait in and out of the dying vegetation and grass, pause it, pop it, flick it. You can see the secondary action that trailer gives it, that Exocraw. I really like crawfish colored to bluegill colored baits this time of year as the water is cooling down. And it's just an excellent bait to get bit. After the chatterbait, I'm gonna pick up the spinnerbait. Now, the spinnerbait is a bait that vibration is key on, but it also has a little bit more subtle action than the chatterbait. Spinnerbait has been overlapped in the last few years by the chatterbait, but this bait will get bit in any conditions, anywhere. Look at this wobble. I make my own spinnerbaits, 3A sounds. 
Um, I really, really, really love to make spinner baits, and I love to use that wire that gets that nice secondary wobble on it. You get that nice action on the skirt. You can see all those things when we slow this down. Spinner bait is a great bait to get bit on. Man, that's a great looking bait. Next up, situationally, the frog, the topwater frog specifically, can be a great option. You see here this slow motion footage of the frog walking on top. It's a great option to really cover a lot of water, but to cover water specifically, I'm gonna fish the frog under docks around cover in those transition areas. It's a natural presentation that can get bit. Next up, we have the tube. Now, I love to throw a white tube this time of year because it looks like a dying shad. The tube also is gonna get put on my deck all the way through winter. This is a bait that will get bit in the coldest of temperatures and the toughest of conditions. The secondary action on a tube is second to none on bottom contact baits. It comes through cover really well, snapping it out of cover, dragging it along, it'll get bit. Final bait I got for you guys here is the Berkeley Havoc Pit Boss. This thing gets bit all the time. This is my go-to bait when I have to fish cover in the fall. For whatever reason, the subtle action of this bait, the subtle glide when you've got it on a light, light, light brass and glass setup right here like I do. I got it on a 16th ounce weight with a nice glass bead on there, Carolina rigging it or Texas rigging it or throwing it on a jig, whatever this bait for whatever reason gets bit. I have ultimate confidence in this bait and the way that it slides through cover here. The bead gives it extra. I hope you guys learned something today. This is why I fish right here. Take the next generation out fishing. Get them out there. Get them on fish. Get them catching stuff just like this. You'll have a great time. We'll see you out there, guys.